Kat here. Last time we talked about some keyboard events and I mentioned that often people use some of those skills for gaming. So I thought I'd look at how you might use the keyboard events to control the movement of a player in a game. Let's say for example we have a really basic applet and our character is a purple dot or whatever shape item. We want to be able to, using the mouse, if we press the up, we want our dot to be able to move up. Or if we press down, we want the dot to move down. And similarly, left and right. So what we would do is we would write a set of statements that said if up was pressed, uh, we will decrease the value of the Y. I'm saying decrease because remember that the top corner is 0, 0, so if you're going down the screen the Y will increase and if you're going up the screen the Y will decrease. So if up is pressed we want to decrease the Y. If down is pressed we want to increase the Y. If left we want to decrease the X and if right, sorry about the squishiness, if right we want to increase the X and that means that wherever our dot is we want to repaint the screen with the new values of X and Y. So let's go into Eclipse and have a look at how we would code this one. Okay so looking in Java and Eclipse I've set up a basic class and I've put that in my events folder in this one I've imported java.awt.event, I've implemented my key listener as well as extending the applet and with the key listener I've put in the methods it needs which is key pressed, key released, key typed. I've requested focus, I've added the listener and I've set the size of the little applet. might actually make that a big square so I might make it 400 by 400. Now if I want to be able to draw my player, so I'm going to use a little square for this one. Um, if I want to draw my player on the screen I need to have something to keep track of the X and the Y variables. And to put them in the middle of the screen to start with I'm going to give them values otherwise it ends up top left and I start wondering did my applet run correctly? Give it initial values which puts it somewhere really clearly visible. So 200, 200. Now let's just draw that one. So G. Um, I'll use fill, fill rectangle, draw it at x and y and I'll make it 20, 20. So I'm going to make a little square. So I'm just going to quickly run that and check that I've got a little square on the screen. Let's just run it again. And there it is. Now the reason I thought to run it again was the fact that the applet didn't show up the appropriate size the first time. So I would then typically close it, run it again, and then it worked properly. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to, in key pressed, so you can choose to put it in key pressed, key released, or key typed. Um, in terms of key pressed and key released, I find that key pressed has a quicker response time because it responds to your press rather than waiting for the release. Um, so I'm going to, in here, I'm going to put my statements that check for the up, down, left, right arrow keys. So to do that, I use e.getKeyCode. So if e.getKeyCode is equal to e.vk underscore up, that means that the up button has been pressed. And there I will set, okay, so if we're going up, that means our y is decreasing so we go y equals y minus 10 for example let's just copy that and paste it paste it paste it because there are four directions so we'll go up down that means that I'll change that minus to a plus I'll put in left and that means that my x will decrease when it goes to the left and then I'll put in right so my X make sure you use all capitals as we've seen there 
and this one will have my X increasing. Then if I want the page to update, I need to put in repaint. Okay, so all I've got is the Y value decreasing for up, increasing for down, X value decreasing for left and increasing for right. So I'm just going to run that. And remember what we found last time, you had to click once on the screen to get it to trigger. And then my little dude can move. To go a little bit further with that concept, let's say for example, we want to be able to move our player, but we don't want them to be able to go beyond the bounds of a particular space. So what we would need to do then is within our statement that checks if the, let's say the up button has been pressed, we then need to check that the Y value is within a certain range. So you might say if the Y value is greater than whatever the top edge is, let's say that's 20, if the Y value is greater than the top edge, um, then you do want to decrease the value. But if it's the same as the top edge or if it's less than the top edge, then you don't. So you basically, when they're going up, you test for the top edge. When they're going down, you test for the bottom. When they're going left, you test for the left edge and right, the right edge. And by saying the edge, I'm referring to the original box. So when I draw the box or draw the rectangle or draw the maze or whatever, I have to be really well aware of where I've put that, so what its coordinates are. And they are the coordinates that I test against in my statement. So first of all, I check which button has been pressed. Then I check if decreasing or increasing the value, depending on which direction we're going, I check if that's going to push me outside the bounds of where I want to be. If it's not going to push me outside the bounds, then I do want to change the value. If not, I want to just ignore it altogether. Okay, so looking at this same piece of code, uh, we want to put in a uh, like a boundary box, and we don't want our rec our little player to be able to go outside of that. So first of all, let's draw that box. So we're going to use g dot draw rectangle. Um, I'm going to start it at 20, 20. That's my common starting point for everything. Now I made my screen 400 by 400, so if I'm starting 2020 from the top left, I might work to 2020 away from that bottom corner, which would put me at 380, 380. Okay, so let's just have a quick look firstly where my rectangle is appearing, my square. Okay, fell off the screen. Might just make that a bit smaller then. We'll go 340, 340. There we go. That will do. That's fine. So at the moment, my player can quite happily go straight past that, and we want to prevent that. Okay, so in my up code, we want to run a check here. So we want to say if y is greater than or equal to so if this top edge of the rectangle is at 20 we don't want it to be able to get to that so it has to be greater than 20 to stay within the bounds let's just test that piece of code and see if it will allow it to go um, beyond that. So click once in the screen. Okay, so it worked well. So I would like to do the same thing down here and say if y and last time I checked for greater than, now I'm going to be checking for less than because I'm going down. So if it is less than 340 We want to increase its value. Now make sure that you put that y equals y plus 10 into those brackets. Once you've put that in there, let's just run it again and test that it actually works. So always test your code as you go along. Otherwise you're going to find that you get a problem 
and you don't know where it happened. So test throughout the process. Okay, so my player, and I'm holding down the arrow key, down, 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 and it's not going any further. So it is restricting the player to the bounds that I have set. Okay, so with left, if x is less than 20, we want it to be able to move. I'm going to do both of these in one hit just because I recently had experience. Oh, sorry, this one's going to be greater than, and this one's going to be less than. Um, so because they worked with my Ys, I'm going to go on a hunch and hope that they're both going to work. Okay, so all I've added in for each of these statements is an extra test that makes sure that the Y has, and the Y or the X hasn't gone beyond the bounds of um, of my little of my little game board. Okay, so up works down left and right. Now if I want to test it effectively, I should test for um, all parts of the screen. So through the middle, through the middle, through the along the side, along the side, along the top and along the bottom. That would be a fair test. Um, but I've had a bit of a play and I'm fairly happy that it's going to work. So if you were to use this for a maze game, it would just mean that you would have to keep very good track of where each of your walls are and your statements, rather than being nice and short here, will have lots and lots of your statements in them. So I'd suggest you have a play with that and maybe add in a few, few more obstacles for your little player and good luck.